It was an interesting week, not because we saw the early access release for the Modern Warfare 3 campaign that seemingly is 3 hours long and IGN gave it a 4, ouch. No, but because there's a lot of trouble inside Bungie, so we need to talk about that and how it relates to PlayStation, as they of course own the company. We also got this as screen news, new info on the upcoming James Bond game. But let's start with a big God of War DLC rumor. A Spanish website namely received a tip from sources close to Sony that the God of War Ragnarok DLC will be announced before the end of this year. And if this is indeed true, of course take it with a grain of salt, but then it will very likely be revealed at the Game Awards on December 7th. And that's by the way also where we got the Horizon Burning Shores DLC reveal last year, which then launched in April. So maybe we have a similar timeline for the God of War DLC if this is true of course. I see many people speculate what this might mean but I would be shocked if it's not the Atreus focused game. The reason he used a bow as a melee weapon in Ragnarok was because they wanted room for growth. Like he's probably going to get a sword or other melee weapon in this like smaller standalone game. They also did something really cool at the end that was only used once if you know you know that always felt weird and makes sense that they want to expand on those moves in the future but still I'm not convinced that it will only be about Atreus because while I liked the parts where you controlled him there were also many people that did not like it at all so Santa Monica has to do something to get those people interested in the new content as well so maybe involve Kratos somehow although I think his role will be similar to Peter in Miles Morales so that he's still there but just not very present like maybe they make a truth playable that would be awesome that we can then use Mjolnir that of course everyone wanted to use in Ragnarok already that might help to get more people interested and even if we don't see it this year I totally believe this final Norse God of War like standalone game or the DLC is coming hopefully it's PS5 only like the Burning Shores DLC so then the Monica can really get crazy finally with the new hardware I'm of course curious to hear your thoughts in the comments I will keep you posted and want to do a predictions video for the game awards very soon as well now a quick update on the Lost of Us multiplayer project we of course heard about the trouble and how the game was put on ice but the game director at Naughty Dog on Twitter notes that he's still working on the game. So it seems like they have not fully abandoned it yet which is interesting. I still hope that we see it would be such a waste of Naughty Dog's time and resources if they cancelled it. I just don't believe that it's really that bad. But of course without any trailers it's hard to say. This of course has to do with the Bungie story as Bungie was the one raising red flags which caused the game to be put on hold. But yeah, more on that in a second. We also got images of the new PlayStation 5 Slim from Brandon on Twitter. He has like weird face plates for the regular PS5. But you still see that the new one is indeed smaller. And in particular the width seems quite reduced. They are seemingly by the way doing Modern Warfare 3 and Spider-Man 2 bundles with this new console. And it should be out in November in the US. So sometime this month, probably before Black Friday. No reason to get them if you already have a PS5 of course. But totally seems like the better option if you don't have the console yet. By the way, that Robert Pattinson bad suit that I talked about last week coming to Batman Arkham Knight, well, it seems to be part of the Arkham Trilogy after all that is coming to Nintendo Switch on December 1st. It seems like other versions of the game will then get it as well as Batman Arkham videos showed in their content. And the armored suits from the Wii U version are seemingly also going to be included. So my theory that this would be tied to Suicide Squad was not true, thank God. But still, we will see a comeback for that game, of course, also likely at the Game Awards. I'm not less curious about how they're gonna present it will be very interesting. Now a game we will likely not see in the foreseeable future but that we did get new info on is IO's 007 game. It is the Hitman team and they want to make it the ultimate spycraft fantasy. The Edge magazine was at the IO interactive studio and picked up other things like that the tone would be closer to Daniel Craig compared to Roger Moore and that the game would perhaps be more scripted than Hitman. The game will also feature its own unique James Bond so not be based on an actor and and it should be a third person action game. I think it could be really awesome, but again, it will be some time before we see it. Now onto that is a screen news and the big Bungie story. Of course, if you like the video so far, leaving a like would really help me out and subscribe because I post one of these news roundup videos every Sunday. So Tom Henderson from Insider Gaming, who of course has his sources, has reported that Assassin's Creed Red will have significant portions of its modern day story set in the last decades of the 21st century, so 2090. 
till 2099. Not sure if you saw it, but there was this cutscene found in the game files of Assassin's Creed Mirage that featured two new Animus operators that were talking and also hinting at this setting. A link to that video will be in the video description. And it makes sense that they want to change things up for when the modern day moves to Assassin's Creed Infinity. This that hub that you will start seeing every time you open up a new Assassin's Creed game, starting with Assassin's Creed Red. And this is also where you can check the modern day story. So as I talked about before, the games themselves will not feature the modern day story anymore, but they will be separate, so only live in the Infinity hub. So then having new characters, a new time period, kind of a clean slate I think makes sense because they of course want to make it understandable for new people coming in as well and going super far in the future while maybe sounding weird at first I think could be interesting like I'm curious to see their take on that. It's just something different. So of course, it's all still a rumor, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Okay, now onto the news that you've likely heard about already, but a quick recap. Bungie laid off roughly 8% of their workforce this week because they missed their revenue targets by 45%. Like, that is huge. Destiny's most recent expansion, Lightfall, was poorly received, which caused people to lose interest and basically meant that the engagement and overall spending from players declined following that DLC. Now combine that with this insane year that we had with big release after big release like regular Destiny players are playing other games right now as well and who can blame them. But yeah for a studio with more than a thousand employees that only makes money from one game that's of course kind of bad news. So they have to get things right which is why they decided to delay the Final Shape expansion first planned for February to June 2024 and Marathon the new extraction based shooter announced at the PlayStation Showcase earlier this year is now pushed to 2025 while being in development since 2019. So on one hand there's anger because these layoffs came out of nowhere. It feels like no one at Bungie is safe because they even laid off the beloved composer Michael Salvatore who for example is also known for the iconic Halo music. Other veteran developers were let go as well. While people at the top who actually made these decisions that led to the poor situation are of course still at the studio. Internally really no one is blaming Sony for this, even management. This is really a Bungie issue and it goes even further as some employees were told that if the Sony buyout did not happen that with the current Destiny 2 performance the studio itself would have been in jeopardy if they were still independent. So basically in danger. Ouch! So PlayStation is keeping them afloat and it kind of makes you worry like what did Sony actually buy if they are in big trouble. Now the main reason to get Bungie was of course to then immediately have a studio that does live service games and to also have Bungie help the live service games that are in development at PlayStation. And even with the layoffs, there are of course still a ton of talented people there that can help Sony out. But still, they put their own studio in a very bad position by mismanaging their own live service game, which of course is kind of a red flag. And Destiny 2 not doing too well combined with the many other live service games that flopped recently. Like the risk reward balance is really off with live service games it's really hard to get it right so maybe going all in on this type of game without any prior success and in particular having single player focused playstation studios try these types of games it's maybe not smart at all. We of course have seen it gone wrong many times. Look at Crystal Dynamics, Bioware, probably Rocksteady will follow them. I would argue Media Molecule with Dreams is another example. So now we have London Studios, the people recently known for Blood and Truth VR doing a fantasy co-op live service game. Like is there room for that? We have a studio with Assassin's Creed and other Ubisoft Montreal veterans doing fair games that did not look interesting at the reveal and they are a relatively small team so are they able to maintain in that game post launch again the lost as multiplayer game seems to struggle even though it might come back like i worry for guerrilla games i really hope they don't fall in the same trap because they now have single player developers working on the horizon online game instead of immediately going to horizon 3 i think it's cool that they are trying at least a game where we can hunt machines together i think it could be really cool but again the live surface landscape is brutal and guerrilla doesn't have experience with like extensive post launch either so there's a lot riding on this i really hope they can make it work but of course with the new monster hunter game probably coming pretty soon that's not great either. Now, of course, I want to touch on the whole can Bungie turn it around and make people interested in Destiny 2 again, as it seems like they're not planning a Destiny 3, so a big refresh anytime soon. 
And if Destiny 2 can't recover, there's a lot riding on the extraction based shooter that people were not the hot on after the reveal as well. It feels just really risky to bet everything on a type of game that very rarely succeeds. So it really seems that Sony bought them at a incredibly bad time. It's not going well with Bungie and we heard that PlayStation might be tooling back their live service commitment too. Like a single player game seems like a way saver bet these days if the quality is there. But they wanted more than 10 live service games before March 2026 as we discussed before but we really haven't seen any of those so are the plans like pushed or changed feels like there's no long-term strategy right now from PlayStation. Right now they're doing fine, they're doing actually pretty good, but they have to have an answer to Microsoft that will only get more dangerous and constantly course correcting while releasing one or two big AAA games per year just won't cut it. Like they have to find new strategies and right now we have not seen them. So they have to play some cards in 2024 and have at least three of these live service initiatives at least launch, like learn from them, get them out. If they don't do that, it's not a great look. Kind of where we ended last week, I find it fascinating. Like PlayStation has been doing well, but like focused on the success they already had. They have to try new things. I'm curious what they will do. Uh, this coming week, we will get a new Assassin's Creed Mirage update from the looks of it. So I will cover that. I will keep you posted on more Spider-Man 2 stuff. And I want to do another Avatar video as well, because there's more to discuss. If you haven't already, check out my impressions after playing the game by clicking on the screen. A like would really help me out. And subscribe, because I will have another news roundup video up next week on Sunday. So speak to you soon. Goodbye.